full of kafirs. I'm looking at about 60 kafirs right now. And I'm one of the chief kafirs in Islam. All right? But one thing about Islam that they don't have the problem we have in the Judeo-Christian world. You know what that is? Universalism. They believe if you don't believe in Allah and his prophet Muhammad, you will burn forever with the other Jews and Christians. Because it is written in the Hadith, first we will destroy the Saturday people, and then we will finish by destroying the Sunday people. It is written in the Quran, whoever is a friend of the Jew and the Christian is no friend of Allah. Isn't it interesting for all my Messianic Jewish friends and all those who don't believe in the two houses of Israel, isn't it interesting that Islam knows the two houses, Jews and Christians, but many of my Messianic brothers reject the two houses of Israel. Any Muslim knows who the two, the, the, those are the two that are targeted for mass genocide. They know who the two houses are. So then what is the fire escape? Yochanan, go with me please. Universalism is everywhere we turn today. Now no one is, 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 is that s deceived enough to get up and say, good morning, I'm a universalist preacher and I'd like to share today's message. They're not going to come that way. Satan, S period, A period. Pan is too slick. He's going to come and say, Rodney King, why can't we all just get along? You pray to Allah, I'll pray to Buddha, I'll pray to the Greyhounds. You pray to the Baka, and let's just get along. Because somehow, through the Baka, and Boca de Baka, and Gaka Bakuka, and the brain go through! The brain go through! Vincent's going, where'd this guy come from? <laughs> to check it out. Notice. So somehow the prayers are going to go through. Because it doesn't really matter. All roads lead to gold. And Yeshua said exactly the opposite. Yeshua said, and like my father, and I don't, I'm, I, you know, I have a hard time respecting my father, but at the same time showing you the errors that even a Jewish person can fall into. You've heard me use my father many times as an example. My father paid for a Jewish education, took my mother to court, put little Moshe in front of the judge. I was, I was, I was eight years old. What did I know? I didn't want to make daddy upset. I, I didn't want to make mommy upset. And so. They both programmed me to give the answer before the judge. My father wanted to put me in the Hebrew school, and my mother wanted to put me in the public school. So here I was, and I told my father, yes, I'll tell the judge I want to go to Hebrew school. My mother, I told my mother, don't worry, Mom, I'll tell the judge that I want to go to public school. Then we got into the court, and rainy day, Simon and Garfunkel, Mrs. Robinson, where have you been? Come, Joe DiMaggio, Jesus loves you more than you will know. I was in the middle. I was in the middle, mommy pushing my derecho, papa pushing, what is the other one, izquierda, and I'm like, see, 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 yes, this school, this school, and I'm like, ah! because all roads are kosher. Just keep saying, oh, everything's kosher. Doesn't make a difference. So my father was, even though he, he, he took my mother to court, and embarrassed me and made me into a, into a pretzel. One arm going this way, my left arm going this way. That doesn't mean he was not a universalist. You've heard me say this before, right? My father goes, I don't want you, Jesus. As a story, me the Jesus. Me the son of God, me the ghost. Gezek. <laughs> I said, Dad, you paid for Jewish education, you took my mom to court, you wanted me to be raised in the Torah, what do you mean? He goes, I don't believe any, so, it's all, I don't want to use the word he used, all right? It's, it's uh, Bolino Scarpino, all right? I don't want to use the word he used. It's all Bolino Scarpino. Never was a Jesus, never, he says, I said, what about Yeshayahu? Yirmiyahu, Isaiah 53, the prophecies. He goes, Isaiah? couldn't get a job for the New York Times. He was a farmer, a stupid, a stupid, ignorant farmer. He couldn't get a job for the, for the Washington Post. So he became a prophet because he couldn't get a job. I said, Dad, so what makes you Jewish? He goes, I'm Jewish. 
So if you don't believe in the Bible, you don't believe in the Torah, doesn't matter, I'm Jewish. So I say, in other words, you're going to ignore all the prophecies? He says, don't give me psukim. Psukim is verses. I'm not a one verses. So I said, Dad, why are you fighting Mom and take me to school? I don't understand. He goes, look, Maish, call me Maish. He says, look, when I want peace, I look at a cow. We're not talking about a Hindu. We're talking about a Jewish man. He said, I look at a cow. Because in a cow I have everything. Butter, milk, food, drink. And when I want peace, I look straight in the eyes. In the egg. So I said, what do I need you Jesus? The eyes give me peace. The stomach gives me butter. Under the stomach gives me milk. I got everything. So I like a cow. I said, Dad, please. That's the end of this discussion. So... Isn't that a form of universalism? When you could look into the eyes of a cow and go to heaven? <laughs> and in Hinduism, watch out for those cows, man. Holy cow, watch out! Because, because you can't eat cows because after all, that may be Aunt Edith or Uncle Fester. Watch it, be careful you, you start eating meat. It's all universalism. I'll show you many ways to go. Yohanan 14.6. Here's what Yeshua taught. Yeshua said to him, I am the Dere, the Emet, and the Chayim. No human being comes to my Abba except through me. This is the fullness of the truth, which most find uncomfortable. It is the message that there's one way to be saved. It is the message that there's one way to enter heaven. It is the message that through Yeshua HaMashiach is the way and there is no other way. It implies, more than implies, it states basically that every other religion, any other way of salvation, any other message of salvation other than by grace through faith in Yeshua is incorrect and is a falsehood. Yeshua made it so simple. We make it complicated. Amen? Yeshua said, I am the derech. Aniha emet, aniha derech. No one comes to the Father except through Yeshua. Doesn't matter what your background is. Doesn't matter what your position is. Doesn't matter what your station is. And see, universalism is diametrically opposed to what Yeshua taught. So it doesn't matter what your background is. Doesn't matter what your race is. Doesn't matter what your nationality is. Was my father Jewish? Huh? He's as Jewish as you can get. Where is that now? I don't have to guess. I don't have to guess. The Bible tells me. Sad, right? Huh? Sad? But I can't, I can't shun my eyes from the truth. So, it de universalism declares there are other ways other than the Messiah, Yeshua, the Son of Yahweh, in which a man can be righteous with Yahweh. That is wrong. And this is where most, that's why most people hate believers. Because we are very exclusive. We say, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of Yahweh. You must be born again. There's only one way. People say, that's very narrow-minded. I cannot accept a Yahweh or a gospel, the Besorah, that is narrow-minded. Wrong. Not at all. There was no way, and Yahweh made one way. He didn't have to make one way because there was no way to be forgiven and pardoned of our iniquities. And so, he, no, he's not narrow-minded. You and I are narrow-minded, but Yahweh is merciful, loving, slow to anger, loving those who love him even for a thousand generations, somebody. Yahweh made a way where there was no way. That is not narrow-minded. Narrow-minded means there's no way. I don't care. Let humanity be lost and condemned. That's narrow-minded. But he made a way when there was no way, and he didn't have to make a way. So that means he's far, far from being narrow-minded. Baruch Hashem, Yahweh. Yochanan 14.6 is designed to give us the clear message of exclusivity. Denying every way of eternal salvation except Yeshua. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. 
People say, well, that's divisive. Yes. It separates the weeds from the tares. It sure is. It's designed to be divisive. Yeshua taught us, brothers and sisters, an uncomfortable message, an exclusive message concerning salvation. We see this message clearly taught, and it should be understandable to all who hear and read Yeshua's words. There are many believers who continue to blind themselves to this simple but true message. However, they are liberals and they despise doctrinal soundness. They don't really believe the Bible all that much anyway. They pick and choose what they want to believe and disbelieve from the word of Yahweh. They fill in the gaps with their own worldly philosophies. And that's what happens when people say only Yahweh only would love and doesn't send anyone to the lake of fire. They cannot submit themselves to the plain teaching of the word of Yahweh by inserting their own ideas of Yahweh into the equation. Go with me to Galutia 1.8. Galutia. Is anybody enjoying? Yes, it's a little bit basic for us. That's true. But we need to know universalism is dangerous and the people who teach universalism don't identify themselves as universalists. Okay? In other words, Yahweh, if you hear this, Yahweh takes into account every person based upon the light that they've been given. That you're listening to a universalist. There is one light that lighteth every man who comes into the world, and that is Mashiach, Yeshua somebody. This is the light that lighteth every, every man. How many men are left out from every? Zero. Nada. Meaning there's only one true light. All others are flickering flames of false hope. All other ways to Yahweh are flickering flames of false hope. In Islam, when Muhammad was on his deathbed, he pleads with Allah and says, Take me into your paradise, Allah, and forgive me of my sins, because he wasn't sure of his future. Yeshua said, I have no sin. Which of you convicteth me of sin? The Quran teaches that Yeshua, or Isa in Arabic, Isa went immediately into the presence of Allah to return again as the coming Mashiach. That's what the Quran teaches, that Isa is returning as the coming Messiah. Well, time out. Let me get this straight. According to Islam, Muhammad is greater than Yeshua. Right. Now, Muhammad was not guaranteed paradise, but Yeshua was immediately taken to paradise. Right? Right. Can you explain that to me? Can, can anyone in this room explain it? So if, if Muhammad wasn't sure about going to paradise, and Yeshua was taken by Allah into paradise, and he's coming again because he was so righteous, explain to me how Muhammad is greater than Yeshua. Can you explain that to me? And the Muslim says, oh no. This is what the Quran says. The Quran also says that Yeshua's mother was Mary, the sister of Moses. Miriam, Miriam, the sister of Moses, was the mother of Jesus. That's what the Quran teaches. So we don't need to go there, right? <laughs> there are many alleged ways to Yahweh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Which, by the way, the way the, the way the Quran teaches that Yeshua was taken by Allah, it says that he was not crucified on Golgotha. It appeared to the deceived Jews that he was crucified. Ah, but Allah in his great wisdom took Esau and fooled the Jews. See, one of Allah's joys was to fool the Jews. And, and it was really Judas, the betrayer, who was hung on the cross. And all the Jews, those stupid Jews, thought it was Esau. But Allah in his great wisdom took Esau to be with him. So the Quran believes Yeshua ascended, bypassing the blood of Golgotha. Isn't that interesting? Just like the nearly inspired version, the NIV, in, in, in Colossians 1.12, that talks about having received redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, and the through his blood is removed over 45 times in the nearly inspired version. you got to be careful. What goes into your heart? What goes into your mind? And who teaches you? You've got to be careful. The nearly inspired version is a perversion of the word of Yahweh. It removes the blood of Yahweh over 40 times. In the unoriginal Greek. Because <laughs> we know that the Brich was written in Aramaic. To by Yahweh. I said to by Yahweh. What I really meant was to by Yahweh. Galut Yah. Galut Yah. 1-8.
Again, this message, what does the Bible say about universalism? And how many people are trusting in universalism today? And because they believe in that doctrine, they stay, they're going to go to the lake of fire, thinking that they're all right. That reminds me of the old preacher and the rabbi. And the rabbi caught a Catholic priest in a vision. He, the, the, rabbi, the, 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 the rabbi had a dream of the Catholic priest putting his big Latin arms into the, into the fire and pulling one up, smelling him, <laughs> dropping him back down, pulling up another, <laughs> and, 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 and looking another. And the rabbi said to the priest, the rabbi said, what are you doing, what are you doing? The priest says, I'm burning right now, I'm burning, I'm suffering because I wasn't born again. So the rabbi says, so what are you getting all bummed out about? The priest said, in the vision, I'm looking for the preacher and I'm looking for the father who told me everything was all right. I'm looking for him. I can't find him. I'm picking him up, and when I can't find him, I put him back. Watch for the preacher who tells you you're okay, that you could hate your brother. You, don't, you could have enmity, that you could be a false witness. You could lie about brothers and sisters in Yeshua and get away with it. Watch for the preacher that tells you that everything is going to be all right. What did Yeshua say? Woe to all men who speak well of you. When all men speak well of you. Woe to you. When all men speak well of you. Galutia 1.8 But though we are a malach from the Shamaim, proclaim any other Bessarach to you other than that which we have proclaimed to you, let him be cursed. As we said before, I repeat again. Verse 9. Galutia 1.9 If anyone proclaims a different Bessarach to you, than the one you've received, let them be like Allah. Cursed. The Hebrew word for uh, curse is Allah. In other words, if you have a gospel that teaches there's more than one way of salvation, it is a cursed gospel, it is a cursed message, it is a false message. There's only one way. And it's not B'nai Yeshua Synagogue. And it's not the First Presbyterian Church of Houston. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. If you love Yeshua and obey His teachings, you have eternal life. And nothing can separate you from the Father. For the Father who gave them to Yeshua is greater than all. And no man, can, no doctrine can pluck them out of my hand. Be careful. Universalism is designed to make people think they're okay bypassing the love of Yeshua. Are we on? I said, are we on? Are we going? To that are by Yahweh. So look, if Rav Shalom repeats it twice, once for Beit Yehuda and once for Beit Ephraim. Notice, if anyone preaches a Besorah where Yeshua is not the only way, there is one 